In Unit 4, there's a variety of learning theories we need to cover. In this clip, we're just going to focus on classical conditioning. In terms of what we need to know about classical conditioning, I've already done a clip where we defined classical conditioning and went through the five elements. In a future clip, I will go over the applications, which includes flooding, graduated exposure, and aversion therapy. In this clip, I'm just focusing on the three stages of Pavlov's experiment. And again, in a future clip, we'll look at extinction, stimulus generalization, stimulus discrimination, and spontaneous recovery in a comparison with operant conditioning. Pavlov discovered classical conditioning by accident. He was doing research on the salivatory reflex when he noticed that the dog that he was experimenting on was salivating prior to the food arriving, i.e. it had learnt to anticipate the food, for instance, when it sighted the lab technician. Hence the origins of classical conditioning, which can be defined as learning through repeated association of two previously unrelated stimuli. I've already produced a clip where I've defined the five elements of classical conditioning. In this clip I just want to focus on the three phases of Pavlov's experiment. So during the baseline phase, i.e. prior to conditioning, Pavlov tested out a variety of stimulus. For instance, the sound of a metronome, sound of a tuning fork, flashing of a light, but most famously the sound of a bell. So during the baseline stage, when Pavlov rang the bell, it evoked no response. So during this stage, the bell was a neutral stimulus which evoked no response. Meat on the other hand, well, when you present meat to a hungry dog, it reflexively salivates. So the meat was an unconditioned stimulus which naturally elicited an unconditioned response. No learning required, a reflexive process controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So during the acquisition phase, we pair the neutral stimulus, sound of the bell, with the unconditioned stimulus, the meat. Seven pairings were required and it evoked the unconditioned response. Critically, the neutral stimulus, the sound of the bell, has to be presented just before the presentation of the meat, a couple of seconds. Otherwise, the dog won't make the association between the sound of the bell and the food. After seven pairings of the neutral stimulus with the unconditioned stimulus, the sound of the bell with the meat, Pavlov could now present the bell on its own and it would reflexively evoke a response, the salivation reflex. So now when we get to this point, the sound of the bell is the conditioned stimulus and the salivation reflex in anticipation of the food is the conditioned response. So you can access these slides from my SlideShare account if you want to fill in these, this table yourself or pause the video and have a crack on your own. For Pavlov's experiment, what was the NS, the UCS, CS, UCR, CR? Solution, well, the neutral stimulus was paired with the unconditioned stimulus and I'll repeat for emphasis that the neutral stimulus must be presented just prior, a few seconds, to the presentation of the unconditioned stimulus so that the dog makes the association between the two previously unrelated stimuli. The unconditioned stimulus, meat, reflexively evokes that unconditioned response. But then, after seven pairings, the conditioned stimulus, when presented on its own, the sound of a bell, reflexively evoked the salivation in anticipation of food, i.e. the dog had learned to make the association between the sound of a bell and the subsequent presentation of food.